Richard Lang, Washington, D.C. We've produced videos in a number of cities filming protests, including Charlottesville, Richmond, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. over the last couple of years. This video is intended to be instructional, showing the techniques and safety procedures we use when we're in the cities filming active protests. The first protest I filmed was on August 11th, the one-year anniversary of the deadly riots in Charlottesville, Virginia. Introduction. You do not need government approval to be a citizen journalist. You can legally photograph or videotape events in public places like streets, parks, sidewalks, public buildings with public access, including police activity, but do not interfere or disrupt what they're doing. Personal safety versus photo opportunities. Protests can be very dangerous environments. Generally, daytime is safer. Later into the night, more violence seems to occur. Peaceful gatherings can quickly turn violent. We call it breaking bad. Look for signs of trouble and avoid. People with bats, clubs, shields, piles of bricks on the sidewalk, hearing shots fired from firearms, seeing broken glass, fires burning, any kind of fighting, toxic odors like tear gas. Avoid any of these areas. Keep your distance. Vehicle use. Your vehicle is probably the most important piece of equipment. It's your mobile studio and your life support system. We recommend using a plain vehicle, mid-sized SUV in a subtle, inconspicuous color. All-wheel drive is an absolute necessary option. It'll facilitate transportation in bad weather if it's raining or snowing. It's good for light off-road navigation, driving through a field or a muddy dirt road. Sometimes it can get you into where the action is in remote location and in some cases to get away from the action when things start breaking bad. It's a place to relax, get cooled off or warmed up while you're on location. There's a substantial compartment in the back of an SUV behind the seats that can be used as a workstation. When you open the rear hatch, the door provides cover from rain and snow and it gives you shade from the sunlight. Filming from a vehicle. There are times when unstable situations may be a risk to personal safety. However, driving a vehicle through active areas can sometimes add an extra layer of personal protection as opposed to out walking in the streets. In the first scenario, we mounted a DSLR camera in the windshield using a tripod secured to the passenger seat with the seat belt. A microphone is mounted on the outside of the window which picks up sound from outside the vehicle. Position of the camera allows the driver to control the camera, both the focus zoom and with a little practice, reach the buttons to record. Side view angle can be filmed from a moving vehicle, having one person driving the vehicle and maneuvering around the crowd, while the second person sits in the back seat filming out the side windows. My body is picking up. Picking up. Digital Single Lens Reflex Cameras, DSLR. They look like their 35mm predecessor, except there's an image sensor where the film was. In the video mode, the mirror flips up and allows the images to project directly onto the image sensor, while the monitor on the back of the camera displays what is being seen by the lens and recorded. In the video mode, the viewfinder is blocked, and the monitor on the back of the camera is very hard to see in bright sunlight. The problem with the DSLR, the operator needs to hold the camera out at arm's length to see the monitor on the back of the camera, which makes it unstable and requires the use of a monopod. Video cameras, camcorders. Most of the newer camcorders have high definition 1080p resolution quality 
and can be used to record widescreen aspect ratio of 16:9 at 30 frames per second, which is what you want for broadcast quality video. Best to mount a directional boom microphone on top of the camcorder, which dramatically improves the sound quality and picks up sound from in directly in front of the camera where the action is. Camcorders have a zoom lens system which is controlled by a rocker switch fitted in the hand grip that allows the operator to go from a very wide angle to a very close up shot quickly while operating in the street. The camcorder has a viewfinder with a rubber eyepiece that blocks the sunlight and gives the operator a very crisp view of the video being recorded. One last point, the camcorder is definitely easier to use in a street environment because it's held with both hands and it's placed close up to the operator's head with the eye in the eyepiece and it's much more stable to hold that way. Protest action is best filmed with two team members shooting video from different perspective angles. A roll is video of the action with the primary subject in focus. B roll is a supporting video of surrounding area for orientation of the viewer. One thing we've learned, film and protests. If you want to find the action, follow the helicopter. Hey Henry, it's Richard. Listen, I've got Jim in the car. We're heading down uh, Broad Street. We're going down to the monument. What do you got for us? From what I can see on um, what's available on the website and from what I'm hearing on the scanner, it looks like they are going to start at the monument and make a circumference route, basically making a four block horseshoe shaped um, type of march. From what the Virginia State Police and the Richmond Police uh, websites are showing, you're going to want to park over on 5th Street. You're going to be an easy access in and out. You shouldn't get too blocked up. Equipment and clothing. The first point is that you want to have the things that you're going to need when you're out in the streets packed up and ready to go. So the camera case that you see here has compartments for everything that we use in the street. So the camera, the microphone, the headsets, the chargers, lenses, whatever you're carrying, there's a space for each one of them in this case. What happens is if you get in a hurry or in the middle of commotion, something starts to break bad, you need to pack and go. If you look in that box and there's an empty space in there, you know that you've got a lens laying around somewhere that you need to find very quickly. As far as your clothing, you want to have a little go bag with all the things that you're going to need or carry with you in the field. When things start to happen and you get a call to go out and film, you don't have time to look around and gather all these things up. First of all, the press pass is something you want to have with you in, in your bag. And we'll talk a little bit more about press passes in a minute. You want to have comfortable hiking shoes. And also, you want to blend in. We like the black t-shirt. Whatever the people are wearing at the protest, that's what you want to have on. You also want to have a hat with a brim because you can't use sunglasses when you're filming because the glasses get in the way of the viewfinders. A rain shell that packs up small is a really good thing to have with you, and you can always wrap up your camera in it if you have to if rain breaks quickly. And whatever you do, make sure you have some water with you. A multi-tool is a really good thing to have because they've got screwdrivers in them that you can use to remove tripod attachments and so forth. A pen with some business cards is good to have. Your cellular phone, and if you're using a cellular phone, you want to have a hands-free headset for it so you can talk to your partners without taking your hands off the cameras. We also recommend a pair of walkie-talkies. The reason for the walkie-talkies are if you've got four people out in the street, if one person pushes the transmit button, Everybody else in the team can hear what's being said, where if you're using cell phones, you've got to call three different people up. We also recommend if there's more than one person that you keep at least two sets of car keys so that two different people have a set of keys. One, obvious, if somebody loses them. We recommend using clips of some kind to hook them on your belt so you can't lose them. But if there's more than one person operating and one person needs to go back to the car to get water or recharge their batteries, they both have keys to get in the vehicle, not to mention if something happens and somebody gets hurt, and one guy has to go get the vehicle to pick up the other guy. Powerful little LED flashlights that have different intensity settings are great. You can use them to see switches and dials on equipment, as well as find something that might have fallen. A really good idea to have one of these little flashlights in your pocket, especially if you're there after darkness sets in. 
mask and goggles for emergency. It's not a bad idea to have something like this with you for protection, basically to get back to your vehicle safely. As a side note, if you have to use this, you've probably been hanging around in a dangerous area too long or getting too close to the action. You have a pair of swimming goggles that protect your eyes from smoke, dust, chemicals, and tear gas. The N95 face mask, which is really designed for people that are painting, has three layers. It's got a charcoal layer in the middle that absorbs the fumes and an exhale valve. It protects from fumes, smoke, and tear gas. It goes without saying that a GPS is a must-have, particularly if you're working in a big city like Washington, D.C. Having the coordinates programmed ahead of time helps you get to where you want to go and work your way through traffic jams. Also, most of the big cities now have express lanes that require easy passes. Pictured here is a Goal Zero portable power and charging station. It's about 8 inches square and 5 inches tall, and it weighs about 12 pounds, but it fits great in the back of a vehicle. It produces 120 volt power for charging your laptops and the plug-in camera battery chargers. It's got two USB ports for charging phones, tablets, and flashlights and it's even got a 12 volt receptacle for charging other accessories that require a 12 volt car plug. This unit will support a camera crew for two or three days and still have plenty of power left over. A great thing to have in the field. And the last thing is the laptop computer, which we're going to talk about next. Laptop computer. A laptop with a power supply is very important to have in the field. Newer and faster is better. The laptop should have an SD card reader, USB ports, high definition screen, and lighted keyboard. You need to have a phone with mobile hotspots so you can connect to the internet while you're out on location. You can use it to check Google Earth Maps, search for names, dates, locations of events, and also make hotel reservations if necessary. On the laptop, Top, we have copies of all the user manuals on PDFs for each camera and other piece of equipment. So if we get in the field and we're trying to figure out how to set a camera a certain way, we can look real quickly. Also important to have is a hard drive, a portable hard drive. All the SD cards should be uploaded onto the portable hard drive as soon as possible. You never do editing in the field. You want to upload all your SD cards to a portable hard drive so you have two copies of all the video in case something happens. Police and Sheriff's Deputies Press credentials help with credibility. Police are generally supportive of media representatives. They control traffic at protest locations. They close and block streets used for protests. They're a great source of information. You can get directions, find locations. They'll tell you where the routes for the protest marches are going. And they can even help you find a safe place to park your car. Scanners indicate problem areas and situations. We recommend that you always cooperate with law enforcement and treat officers with respect and courtesy. Press credentials, media passes. Press credentials with an ID card. The oversized press pass is attached to it so that when you get on location, you simply flip it down and it shows up clearly in the window. In the United States, news gathering organizations and individuals do not need government authorization or permission. Citizen journalists are protected by the First Amendment of the Constitution. Journalism is not licensed, regulated, or subject to any official stamp of approval in the United States. There's no official press credential. Media organizations issue identification badges that say press or media, but this only indicates that an individual is associated with an organization and it has no legal status. Media passes provide no guarantee for access to any events. However, press media passes do help establish credibility with police and the public in general. If you would like to get information about new videos we post, there's a subscribe button on our website at langonline.media. We'd love to hear from you, so post your comments below.